Welcome to Elite Misery's Peak. This is the first video in a series that I'm going to do to demonstrate the first life viability of the Ginger Spice Pure Druid Caster Healer tankish build. It's just based on, it's something I've kind of been wanting to do, but um, had a number of people ask over the, well it's almost been a year now since I posted that build, ask about the first life viability of it. And um, so I thought I'd roll up a new druid and just play it just like I, uh, I posted it. And just want to show you right now, uh, I am level 3. So I'm actually doing this one under level, but just Misery's Peak, no big deal. I'm just using just garbage gear for the most part that I got out of the out of the vendor or out of the pawn shops. Mostly like stat two items, wizardry two. Uh, now the armor uh, I crafted is just plus three leather uh, leather armor, strength plus two bracers. I did grab the ring of elemental essence off of uh, another tune. This is a great low level caster item mention it in my build. It's got Glaciation, Combustion, and Magnetism 36 on it, plus Power 3, so 30 extra spell points. Really nice item to use for like level 3, 4, 5-ish. Um, it's Fortification 40%, Protection 2, Resistance 2, Hit Points 10, Natural Armor 2. Uh, for the shield though, I do have an Invulnerability Shield. So this is something I mentioned in my build post that you should have as soon as possible. In fact, an invulnerability item, for, I think, for any class uh, is really, really nice to have at low levels. You get DR5, practically makes you invincible um, for the first several levels. Um, so I got it on the shield. And then I also crafted this uh, plus two acid flame touched iron scimitar. Now, here's a little tip. You may not know that you can get flame touch blanks out of the chronoscope rate. And you can do that by going right after the first fight. You can go right there into the into the uh, into the tavern, and you go to the to the vendor in the back, and he sells basic flame like martial and basic flame touch weapons. So you're not going to have like hand wraps and and exotic weapons like kopeshes and things, but. Um, there are like two-handed swords, long swords, short swords, and, uh, scimitars, great axes, and stuff like that. So you can go in there and buy them for dirt cheap, and take them out and turn them into a blank to craft onto. So that's what I did. And on my wolf, I've got. Uh, the invulnerability armor, so there's no plus on it whatsoever, it's just invulnerability because I'm TR5 slash magic and then the, the collar is exactly the same as my scimitar except it's not flame touch, it's just plus two acid. And also, you know, if you're not a crafter, you know, usually you can find a friend or somebody to craft for you. Even if you're not really interested in getting your levels really high, I highly, highly recommend getting your levels in at least one of the schools so you know your arcane, divine, or elemental, up to level t about 25-ish. Because if you can get it up to that, then uh, you can craft masterwork craftsmanship shards. Which to have a hundred percent crafting uh, chance to do that, you have to be level uh, 33 in any one of the schools. But um, at you know around level 25, you're going to have a decent enough chance. And what you can do with the shards of masterwork craftsmanship is reduce the minimum level of the item by two. So these invulnerability items that I have normally would be level four, but because I put a shard of masterwork craftsmanship on it, they are now minimum level two. So I do have ship buffs. I don't have the old ship buffs, so I don't, I'm not rocking the 30 resists right now. Um, but even the new set of ship buffs in between that and the invulnerability item, you know, you're just about invincible for the first several levels. And, you know, especially if you get the 30 resists going, uh, you're not going to be hurt really by any kind of elemental traps or spells.
Oh, the summons are really awesome too at uh, this level. So I've just got uh, level 2 spells now. So I've got the hyena, and he's nice because he trips a lot. I also want to show you what my enhancements are like. So right now I just have the Beguile uh, fully uh, fully maxed there, and then working on the Produce Flame uh, spell-like ability, and then the first Wax and Wane. Oh, and then for spells, right now I have the regular Produce Flame, Long Strider, and then you always get the Summon Animal, the Summon Nature's Ally, and then um, Ram's Might, and then for second level, Bull Strength, and Kirby Cold. And for all that trash loot that I had, you know, I could have crafted better, but, you know, it's just <laughs> not worth taking the time at this level. It's just not necessary. I'll craft some stuff for this too in later levels. But at, at this point, you know, someone was commenting recently on the build that, you know, there's no there's no casting power right away. That he thought you know, he was going to start out and, and um, you know be a strong caster. Druids start out very very slow as casters and uh, very weak as casters. So it takes a while for that power to ramp up. And the first sort of power curve is level five when you get uh, call lightning. And once you get Call Lightning and you can start amping it up, like at level 6, I say take Maximize. At that point, you can you can one-shot mobs. Um, and that's why I've said before on some of the post responses that, you know, I really don't feel like Druids should even bother with Finger of Death. Because in heroic levels, you can one-shot most mobs with a strong Call Lightning. So keep your Magnetism as amped up as possible. And your call lightning, you know, and it's an SLA too, so you're, it's like four or six spell points. Um, and you can one shot mobs with that, and the cooldown times on the regular version a lot faster than Finger of Death. Doesn't require uh, any kind of spell penetration check, although it can be evaded. But for mobs that you know, if you're having problems with the evasion mobs, just hit them with Creeping Cold or Greater Creeping Cold. That cannot be evaded. So you're mostly going to be meleeing, you know, up until at least about level five. And you know, if you want to go into wolf form and have some fun there, that's fine too. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It's just whatever I feel like. I don't have feather falling boots on yet. Too lazy to craft them. Couldn't find them in the in the pawn shop, so I have to remember to not jump down from here. That will probably kill me.
for healing yourself at this level, really on any tune, you should be using potions of cure critical wounds, you know, which you can get from any vendor anywhere, pretty much. Um, that's going to heal you, you know, 20 points. You can save on your mana by using those instead, and, uh, you know, you, your own healing spells right now. I mean, if you're casting, like, cure light wounds, you're just going to eat up your eat up your mana. And, you know, keep some wands, too. I have a wand of cure moderate wounds right now. Also, if you don't already, you know, if you're newer to the game, you should be carrying around a collection of potions with you that include potions of lesser restoration, potions of blindness removal, potions of neutralization, of oh, poison uh, neutralization, potions of disease removal, and remove curse potions. Very important. And I would recommend having them hotkeyed too. Um, there are going to be some quests that you're, you know, you don't want to take time to, you know, search around for them and click on them. You just need to be able to hit them really fast. Now, some people like to use clickies. I used to be a clicky person, you know, when I first started out, and then probably for, you know, first year or two. But the advantage that potions have over clickies is that you don't have to change your gear. When you swap gear to use a clicky and then you swap back, that takes time. And, you know, not only does it take time that you could be DPSing or doing something else, but sometimes you forget to switch it back or, you know, it doesn't switch back and you think that it did. And then that becomes problematic. You run around without the gear on that, you know, that you want. So I highly recommend getting used to using potions. This is our Seracaix the Dragon. If you never really paid attention, you may not have realized that's the same dragon that you fight later in Prey on the Hunter. And the Slayer Zone there is called Osirakaex's Valley. For Druid 2, I also hotkey the, the different forms. You know, by the time I'm level capped, you know, I'm I'm just I just have hotkeyed Winter Wolf, uh, Fire, and Water Elemental because those are the only ones I use, and I only use Winter Wolf for the most part to snow slide around. Somebody also sent me a tell, somebody who's uh, asking me what video capture software I use. It's a free program called Debut, D-E-B-U-T. And I think it's a company called NCH Software. And when you go to their site, uh, you want to make sure that you, you click to download the free non-commercial version. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to download the regular version, and then after you use it five times, it's going to tell you to, to enter a, a serial number or a registration code. And it's kind of, you know, it's just like a small, you know, click here to get the free version kind of thing, so you got to kind of look for it. Trip action there from the hyena. But the summons are a lot of fun, and the wolf is a lot of fun in heroic levels. You use them all the time. I drew it. So I do have augment summoning. You know, I recommend using that. 
on my build post. It's just for fun, you know, it does make the summons and the wolf tougher. I'm gonna swap it out once I get to, I think it's like level 12 or 15, I say to swap it out. At that point, your summons are gonna be not as big of a help, and you're gonna benefit from something like Shield Mastery and Improve Shield Mastery more than you will Augment Summoning. damage from the SLA version of Produce Flame. <laughs> and let's see, here's Creeping Cold. <laughs> Ticking for four, six. Not very impressive at this level. But, you can hit a boss with it. And, you know, in a few more levels, it'll be a lot stronger. You know, right now, these low-level quests are super easy if you got ship buffs and but if you're new to the game it might be challenging if you're new to the game you're probably not watching this video if you're super new So even though it's doing really weak damage, I'm able to take out those casters with Creeping Cold. No problem. <laughs> no feather fall. If you've watched, uh, you know, a few of my videos, you may have noticed that a lot of the music is, uh, is from a band called the Gymkata, and they were my favorite local band when I used to live in Ithaca, New York, and they do tour nationally. But I've pretty much run through their entire collection, so won't be doing too many more videos using their music. If you want to check them out, uh, you can go to jimkata.com, J-I-M-K-A-T-A, -A, and uh, some of their albums are available for free download. song that's on now is just some live song they did from years ago. It's not even an album release.
But it was 15 minutes long, so I figured why not do that for Misery's Peak. This quest just doesn't seem exciting enough for for dubstep. For feats right now, you know, getting following the build, uh, besides Augment Summoning, I do have the Toughness Feat and Extend Spell, because I like my buffs. That's an easy one to get rid of if you're looking to play around with the build a little bit and experiment with some of the feats. I really like it, not only because I do like my buffs, but for Body of the Sun that can be extended and it's such an awesome spell when you get it at level 13 and right up through the rest of your teen levels. I'm gonna do some videos. I'm gonna make sure I do a video right when I get that at level 13. It just annihilates everything around it as long as it's not immune to fire. But just, you know, like I wrote in my build post, it just like Firewall it does lose effectiveness the higher you get in level. Still can be a very effective spell at higher levels, it's just not going to you know melt away the mobs like it does at level 13, 14, 15. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions about the build, you can respond to my forum post. If you have any questions about any of my videos, you can respond on YouTube.